In Amonkhet, we were introduced to the story of Neheb the Worthy, a minotaur who tried to complete the trials of the five gods alongside Gideon and Samut. But did you know that they predicted his transformation into an Eternal that will be part of Nicobolus' army in this copy of Mirage Mirror released in Hour of Devastation? He then went on to have two new cards made for him after his death and resurrection as an undead slave of Bolas in Neheb the Eternal and Neheb Dreadhorde Champion in War for the Spark where he was finally defeated. Merch, like, comment, subscribe. Hello. Welcome back to Back to Basics, episode number 23, a show where I take EDH commanders and try to find the perfect basic lands to fit them. I love seeing someone sit down with some beautiful basic lands, but something I love even more is seeing how well those lands match their commanders. One quick note before we begin. I like to give the artists credit for their artworks, but I may not pronounce their names perfectly. I'll try my best, but please forgive me and correct me if that ever happens. First on the list, we've got Duretti, Scrap Savant, from way back in Commander 2014. Doretti's aesthetic is a blend of city life and artifice, which in many ways puts him perfectly in Ravnica, even though his home plane is on Fiora. His regal clothing and mechanical style helped me to narrow down to five different mountain artworks that you can pick and choose from. Starting with this mountain from the Izzet Guild Kit, illustrated by Svetlan Velenov, that shows off a massive engine which matches Doretti's artifact sub-themes well. Or, if you wanted to go abstract with the connections, you could go with this mountain from Jumpstart that has beams of electricity forming themselves into orderly mountains. However, if you were just thinking about color styling, then I'd recommend this mountain from Ravnica Allegiance, illustrated by Jonas DeRoe, that has those bright yellows and reds that are present in Doretti's artwork. Or this mountain from Return of Ravnica, illustrated by Adam Paquette, that has no traces of the blue color in it to distract color-wise. However, I think both work in this scenario. Or finally, I think this is the perfect time to showcase this mountain from the streets of New Capenna, illustrated by Zbigniew M. Bilak, that I think matches the bright, intense worldview and complex machinery that any Duretti player would want to exemplify. Second on the list, we've got Feather the Redeemed from War for the Spark. This artwork focuses heavily on the sky behind Feather, but it's contrasted heavily by the bright orange color of the sun reflecting through his wings and through his armor. That coupled with the story-driven elements of Ravnican buildings in the background, alongside the Parhelion flagship, drew my attention to Ravnica as a focal point for choosing basics for him. But starting with color-wise, take a look at this plane from Kanza Tarkir, illustrated by Sam Burley, that emphasizes the bright sky blue alongside this mountain, also illustrated by Sam Burley, from Theros Beyond Death that does the same. The thing I liked about this pairing was its hyper-saturated elements, and the brightness is really shown throughout all of the basics. For a second pairing, I wanted to focus less on the sky, and more on the sunset slash sunrise that is behind Feather. So take a look at this mountain from Cons of Tarkir, illustrated by Florian de Jessencourt, and this plane from the 2020 promo packs, illustrated by Donald Lundgren. I am in love with this pairing because it continues the focus of the sun, and even though the plane is comparatively much darker than other basics and Feather's art, I think I favor it most in this pairing. For a third option, I really wanted to capture the story elements of Feather, and show urban settings that also showcase his unique city style. However, the thing I found difficult was trying to match up with the level of brightness as well. It was actually quite difficult to find Ravnica-centered basic lands that didn't have heavy contrasted and deep dark tones, which Feather goes out of his way to not have. So I expanded my search to this Orishove Plains from Ravnica Weekend, illustrated by Jen Ravenna, that was surprisingly brightly colored for being Orishove colors, and this beautiful mountain from Magic Origins, illustrated by Noah Bradley, that really emphasizes the bright orange color as well. The only thing I didn't like about this pairing was the deep dark tones that the mountain brings into the lineup, but I felt like since all the other elements match up so well, it was worth mentioning. For a third pairing, I wanted to go stylistic and showcase some of Feather's unique themes. So take a look at this plane from Jumpstart, illustrated by Piotr Dura, that shows off his wings, and this mountain from M12, illustrated by Sam Wood, that showcases how high up in the sky Feather is. It's a cool blend that I think matches both color-wise and theme-wise, and after looking at them all together, I ended up really liking it. Going the opposite side of the color pie, let's check out our third pairing. It's Skullbriar, The Walking Grave, illustrated by Nils Hom. I love this artwork. The stale and dead air around him choking the scene in a haze makes him seem inaccessible and intimidating. 
while also barely being able to be seen, which was a cool way to showcase his form, which is almost too complex to be definable. It really gives off the impression that a huge mass graveyard of unnamed corpses decided to stand up and walk. Keeping that in mind, the focus became to have the bleached and low saturated imagery be emphasized in basics, while also not eliminating all the color it is showing in the process. Take a look at this old school pairing starting with this swamp illustrated by DJ Cleland Hura from 7th edition, and pairing it with this forest illustrated by John Avon from the Beatdown box set, released in 2000. I like the swamp in this pairing the most because of the little demon that's crouching in the tree in the background, while also being super low saturation as well. Emphasizing those foggy elements, take a look at this swamp from the Cold Snap theme decks illustrated by Douglas Schuler, and this forest illustrated by John Avon from the Dual Decks Heroes vs. Monsters. I love how each of these two don't have any background in it besides the haze of fog, and the twisted elements of the forest match surprisingly well with the composition of Skullbriar. For a third pairing, take a look at this forest illustrated by Rob Alexander from Commander 2014, and coupling it with this swamp from the Cold Snap theme decks we were showcasing earlier. I like this pairing because it tries to emphasize the best of both worlds, the bleached and foggy atmosphere in the swamp alongside the intense and mottled appearance of the forest that mimics Skullbriar himself. And for a fourth option, I wanted to do something a little bit more rendered. The earlier pairings I showed you had more line work, with stroke outlines helping to add contrast. But take a look at this swamp from Dragons of Tarkir, illustrated by Adam Paquette, that has the hazy feeling alongside the dead and marshy vibe, and coupling it with this forest from Time Spiral, illustrated by Craig Mullins, that does the same. I feel like these needed mentioning because of how much more realistic they appear in relation to the other three pairings that we've seen. But fourth on the list, we've got Boba Rigmos Enraged from Gatecrash. This artwork is extremely intimidating. The held action pose that Boba Rigmos is taking adds tension, because you know that he plans on striking you, the viewer, with his hammer. That, coupled alongside the sunset in the background silhouetting him and the dark and bleak subject matter, all make him much scarier looking than his previous counterpart. So, take a look at these basic lands, starting old school, with this mountain from Mercadian Masks, illustrated by Scott Bailey and this forest from the Arena League promos, illustrated by Rob Alexander. The value of this pairing is mostly its borders, using the dark brown color and using it to highlight the artwork of Boba Rigmos. The second pairing, I wanted to start emphasizing modern borders. So take a look at this mountain, illustrated by Rob Alexander, from the Magic Premier Shop promos, and this forest, illustrated by Rob Alexander from the same set. The reason I liked these was the crashing feeling that you get from the mountain, as well as the deep silhouetting you get from the sunset in the forest that all matched his vibe very well. However, for simpler options, take a look at this pairing of mountain from the Dual Decks Elves vs. Goblins that shows off the height of the mountain, and this very bleak looking forest from Shadowmoor that really shows off those dark tones. I loved this pairing, and I think it might be my favorite of the whole bunch because of the forest having the red tones in it that matches color identity in the right hand corner. But for a final pairing, I wanted to try to emphasize those red tones while also matching his lore. Take a look at this mountain from Magic Origins, illustrated by Sam Burley, and coupling it with this forest from the Magic Fest promos, illustrated by Sam Burley as well, that showcases Boba Rigmos' plane of origin. I like this pairing a lot for its color matching, and its ability to bring out the reds more clearly in Boba Rigmos, ultimately doing a great job of showcasing this dark-themed gruel-colored commander. And last but not least, we've got a tough one. It's Danitha Capuchin, Paragon, from Commander Legends. She is a Dominarian legend, which immediately lends itself to that beautiful stained glass treatment that you see on the walls, in her sword, and in her armor. However, that striking motif made it more tough to find basic lands for her than I initially realized. And ultimately, I wasn't able to find lands that perfectly match that aesthetic. However, I was able to match colors with her, using lands that share a similar color palette, which is where I'll start here. Take a look at this Plains from M15, illustrated by Nils Ham, or you could consider this Plains from Jumpstart, illustrated by Yang Hao Han, or this Plains from Theros Beyond Death, illustrated by Sam Burley, that combines all of those stained glass colors into a powerful purple hue. Or finally, you could consider this Plains, illustrated by Sam Burley from the streets of New Capenna, that focuses on those bright purple hues, as well as having that Dutch angle that you see in Danitha's artwork. 
Ultimately, these pairings were color-based shoe-ins that I felt matched from a visual perspective, but I felt it worked despite none of these being able to perfectly reflect her lore. But there you have it. Five more commanders, sorted for which basic lands I think match them best. But I want to see what you think. Tell me which commanders you'd like me to try and pick up basic lands for. Comment below and let me know, and have a great day.